Hi there, welcome to video two of PFTs. Uh, first, we talked about classification, actually, first, we talked about uh, what PFTs were and uh, spirometry, and now we're going to talk about classifying spirometry results based on the values and understanding uh, what kind of disease process that is. There are four categories of disease for MBRC exam that you need to know. Uh, normal, which means all the values are above 75% or 70, as the case may be. And uh, early small airways disease is not really a category, but something that's interesting to note. Uh, the other three categories are obstructive category, with reduced flows, restrictive category with reduced FVC, and combined where you have both reduced flows and reduced FVC. Here's a, a review of what constitutes an obstructive disease. Uh, they used to say CBABE, uh, chronic bronchitis, uh, uh, emphysema, asthma, uh, and really cystic fibrosis and bronchiectasis are what I call combined diseases. They have both qualities of restrictive and obstructive. But purely obstructive diseases that would affect those flows are chronic bronchitis, asthma, and emphysema. Restrictive diseases, this is basically everything else and it's a very wide category. And it can be a acute restrictive components, chronic restrictive components, All right, here is a normal on the black, and in the red is an abnormal, in this case, an obstructive type of pattern. This patient is really having a difficult time blowing out all their air in the first second. As you can see from their FEV of only 1.2, even though they had an FEC of 3.7. So if you divide the two, Here it is, 1.2 divided by 3.7 is only 32%. What do we say better than 70 to 75% is gonna be normal. So this is obstructive disease. In, case, in this case, kind of a severe, moderate to severe obstructive disease. FPC was near normal uh, and close to what they were predicted to get. Uh, and the 2575, let's look at that also. Oh, one thing I didn't mention was the percent of predicted. And this is whenever you take what a patient's predicted to get, divided into the value that they did achieve. For example, let's say the patient's predicted to get an FVC of four liters and they only achieve three liters of FVC, then their percent of predicted is then 75%. Three divided by four is 75%. So anytime you take a, an actual value and measure it by a predicted value, you get what's called a percent of predicted. So that's one thing that we look at to see how close is the patient to what the charts and tables that have been set up for a long time based on their age and their height and their weight and their sex. Uh, how do they compare? How do they compare to the group? All right, here's the 2575. Once again, we've created that line with the points at the 25%, 75% point, and we looked at the slope of that line, and we only measured uh, 1.0 which uh, I don't show what the predicted is, so we could see that's probably 30% of predicted, maybe 25% of their predicted. It's pretty low, actually. Uh, and if you see the 2575 of the normal, or what they were predicted to get, it's standing straight up, but then the line lays down like this, and you get a lower value. Okay, what about restrictive? That was obstructive, restrictive. Look at the shape of it. Note how the shape mimics the normal shape. In other words, if you look at an FEV of 1.9 and a FVC, that's an indicator of flow. And in this case, it's normal. 
because 1.9 the time they had they were able to blow out 95 percent of their ear in the first second uh, but notice where how low the fbc is compared to normal this is the hallmark of restricted disease so it didn't affect the flow didn't affect the fbc fev1 divided by fbc and it doesn't affect the 2575 because that line would be standing pretty much straight up almost and uh, it did affect the FBC though and so this one is restrictive component. Also these things can be compared to percent of predicted. Now let's talk about a flow volume loop. So far, everything we've graphed has been what we call a scalar, and that is some uh, measurement, in this case volume, on the y-axis and on the x-axis time in seconds. Uh, and those are called scalars. Uh, but we can also graph this in a different way, and we have a thing called a flow volume loop, which is another way of graphing the same spirometric data. For example, this. Actually, you're looking at one, two, three, four, five different, five or six different flow volume loops with different types of pathology. Uh, the normal, and I, I, unfortunately it's cut off the top of the normal one, is in the orange here, if you can see that. That's a normal flow volume loop. If a patient had uh, obstructive disease, one of those asthma, emphysema, chronic bronchitis that affected their flow, you'd see something like the blue or the red. It's kind of a ice cream cone that's scooped out. Uh, restricted disease will look tall and skinny like the green. That would be a restrictive component, which is, uh, affects the FBC, but not the flows. So my question is, what is the difference between slow volume capacity and forced volume capacity. Well, if you have obstructive disease, this is where it shows up because when you put pressure on your lungs to force air out, what happens is a thing called dynamic compression occurs, compressing the airways when the airways have poor support or they're too narrow to begin with. Uh, support support in case like emphysema or too narrow in the case like asthma or chronic bronchitis. Uh, airways close down early and make it difficult to blow the air out. So that's where you can see uh, the flows reduced at a forced vital capacity. So the difference between SVC and FBC is the FBC is forced uh, making it more difficult to blow all the air out in the case of an obstructive disease. And restrictive disease, remember, does not affect the flows, it just ref def it affects the amount of volume there. Let's review one of the spirometry uh, just to see uh, if you are understanding this. Here's a test. All right, the line for one second is in dark, and we can see basically how much they blew out here. Uh, if you come along the side here, it looks like it's probably uh, close to five and a half liters, maybe 5.4, uh, and we cross the one second line at below four, maybe 3.75, so yes, FBC was 5.4, FEV1 is 3.7, so what's the first major flow indicator? FEV1 divided by FBC was 69%, abnormal. And you can kind of tell by the shape of the curve, it's not standing up quite, it's leaning down some, and so you can kind of see in that that this is going to be low, this first timing mark. So this indicates what? It's a reduced flow. So it indicates an obstructive 
disease, asthma, emphysema, chronic bronchitis, something like that. So FEV1 divided by FHC, 69%. Let's look also at the 2575, and it is, uh, the 2575 was 69% as well, also low, an indicator of flow in the small airways. Another indicator of flow that indicates uh, being low indicates some obstructive disease. And peak flow, peak flow is derived using the first part of the flow and we got a peak flow of 6.63, which was, uh, now this is what a printout would look like. A printout of, uh, from a spirometry that you were doing. You would, uh, you would have input into the machine, the patient's height, age, sex, weight, all, the, all that data, and it would assign them a predicted, which is right here. So now it can compare theirs against predicted. This patient actually did, on their FVC, did more than predicted. It was not unusual to see something like that. FVC, they hit 100%. Uh, the FEV1 divided by FVC, they were predicted to get 80%. They only got 68 FEV, FEF 2575, they were predicted to be at 5.66, so they're only 41% of their predicted. And on the peak flow, they're at 60% of their predicted. So there's a couple of things that are abnormal here. What are they? There's your arrows showing what's abnormal. Those things are indicators of flow and therefore mild obstructive pattern. Had it been only the FBC that was low and the others normal, it would have been restrictive. Now, if the FBC and the flows, the FEV uh, one divided by FBC, if these are also low as well as FBC, then you have combined disease or both. Here's a flow volume loop from the same tracing and it shows uh, this is a forced expiratory tracing here. This is when the patient breathes back in to complete the, the loop. Uh, the top is going to be, the peak is going to be the peak expiratory flow rate because this is a flow volume loop. Uh, the machine will put a timing marks in for FEV1, FEV2, and so on. The FEV1 being the one that's most important to us. And it'll do the math for us. It also shows since volume is on the X axis here, it shows us how much volume we got and shows the FVC. And on this slide, it's uh, real typical of a spirometer machine to put in a dotted line for their predicted. So this patient was predicted to have a, the ice cream cone that looked like this, the dotted line, if you can see that. And then this kind of scooped out appearance tells me uh, obstructive disease. Again, let's take a look at the uh, flow volume loops. If I can find them, here they are. There's the flow volume loop. So the one we just looked at looks a lot like this red one. Uh, whereas compared to the, the uh, yellow, which is normal, and then the restrictive, low volume, good flows. Okay, that is all I've got for video number two. What do we have left? Well, we've also got to talk about FRC determination, that way in which we measure FRC, the indirect way, since we couldn't blow out residual volume, we can't measure 
directly. So we have an indirect way, which you might find interesting. And uh, a couple of methods of doing that. And then diffusion capacity. So we'll talk about that in the next video. So go to PFT number three.